My name is Andrew Goetz and I'm a chief resident at Mayo Clinic. This case is a spontaneous cribriform plate CSF leak repair with a free mucosal graft and it was done with Dr. Aaron O'Brien, a rhinologist and skull base surgeon in conjunction with Dr. Maria Paracelda, our partner in neurosurgery. This patient is a middle-aged female with an elevated BMI who presented to our clinic with right-sided clear drainage from her nose. A CT venogram showed narrowing of the right transverse and sigmoid sinuses and she underwent endovascular stenting. This resulted in decreased flow through her CSF leak but she continued to have drainage. And we like stenting in this setting in order to maximize the likelihood of surgical success and decreasing the pressure on the repair. Shown here is her preoperative CT scan, which shows the area likely of leak at the right cribriform plate. And the endoscopic examination also here shows this bleb of clear fluid and the likely site of leak and potentially two sites that will require repair. Here we are in the right sinonasal cavity, injecting the head of the middle turbinate, as well as the axilla of the middle turbinate. Given that this is a very medial leak, we elected not to perform a unilateral sinus surgery, but routinely that may be part of this type of repair. We elected to start with a middle turbinate resection using the curved scissors here. It's often helpful to initially perform a more conservative resection and additional removal can be done. We took this turbinate out generally on block and then we're able to use the mucosa from the middle turbinate for our free mucosal graft later. This is working back along the middle turbinate toward the tail and then removal of the middle turbinate here. Again, setting aside for grafting. It's important to cauterize along this edge as this can be a source of bleeding and meticulous hemostasis during this case is essential in order to identify the site of leak and ensure a good repair. So again, this can be done in a few different steps in order to get the access you need. So this is just trimming extra bit of that turbinate. Now we're able to visualize the site of the leak here with this bleb of mucosa coming from the cribriform plate and an additional bleb more anteriorly, which we will find in addition to the primary site of leak, there were multiple sites that required repair and coverage. So as we've identified this, we then begin to work circumferentially around this area, again meticulously removing uh, the mucosa, ensuring good hemostasis in order to keep this in view. Initially, this can be a bit intimidating to remove the mucosa due to concerns about making the cerebrospinal fluid leak more robust, but one must recognize that the mucosa needs to be removed and that we are here to fix the CSF leak, and so increasing the flow of the CSF is not so detrimental. The most important aspect is removal of all the mucosa in order to get a good repair. So as we work here, taking more superior and anterior mucosa away, we do begin to visualize more than one side of CSF leak coming from the olfactory fila and the foramina in the cribriform plate. Here you can now see pulsations of that CSF, again, with multiple sites likely involved and the mucosa is gently removed across each of these sites in order to get good bone apposition with our graft. There's a combination of instruments that can be helpful here. You have seen the dissecting more sharp scraping devices as well as uh, small cups in order to ensure all of this is removed. Here our neurosurgical colleagues have now entered the field in order to utilize a team-based approach with one surgeon holding the scope, allowing for two-handed operation. And here the endoscopic bipolar is being used to bipolar the dura. 
the endoscopic bipolar does quite a good job at slowing the flow of CSF. Here is a dural substitute, synthetic dural substitute being placed. In general, it's good to get this uh, well tucked in all around the bone and in an extra dural fashion. This is a fairly common approach for us. Again, the neurosurgical team is placing this, ensuring good coverage of all the areas of leak. Once the dural substitute's in place, at this point we should not see any more CSF pulsations or leakage, so some of the edges can be further unfurled and ensure good coverage. This is the free mucosal graft that we harvested from the middle turbinate. Uh, floor graft, uh, nasal floor is also a good donor site for free mucosal graft. And the markings on there are to remind the surgeon which edge, uh, which surface is to be placed outward in order to make sure that the graft is placed appropriately. And this is unfurled and placed over the repair. Once good circumferential coverage is ensured, some absorbable packing can be placed for post-operative healing and to aid in hemostasis, keeping the graft in place. Some surgeons prefer some fibrin glue in addition to ensure that this stays in place and to provide a barrier for post-operative debridements as additional packing will be placed. And this fibrin sealant can be a barrier between what you remove in the clinic when you see the patient back. Key points for an endoscopic spontaneous CSF leak repair include preoperative workup may include a CT venogram to ensure there is no stenosis of the dural sinuses, and if stenosis is identified, consider stenting preoperatively to optimize outcomes of the repair. Determining whether a endoscopic sinus surgery should be included to get good access and excellent exposure for your repair. Complete removal of mucosa surrounding the leak will ensure post-operative healing. A good multilayer closure will ensure good healing. This may include a dural substitute as well as mucosal coverage in various forms. That's all we have for this video. Thank you for watching.